and welcome to another episode of Lex Education, the comedy science podcast where comedian me, Laura Lex, tries to learn science from... It's Captain Normal. He's uber normal. He's super normal. He's just my brother, Ron. Who's that boy? It's Ron. (laughs) Hi, Ron. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm going to see our parents tonight. Oh, really? Yep. Why? What do you mean, why? Because they're our parents. Seems like an odd thing to do. No, I'm gigging near Southampton and then I'm going to finish the journey and go down and see them. Uh, Mainly because they've just got a new puppy and Mackie and I really like the puppy. But also... Yes, there we go. (laughs) Yeah, fond of them. Um, Nice. How are you, Ron? It's just about ten days. We've not spoken very much recently. Well, we tried to to fucking speak to you yesterday and then you were such a prick I blocked you on WhatsApp. Did you notice? (laughs) No, how oh. would I notice? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't sure what it would look like from your perspective. Whether it would, I would just vanish, or you, would, it would say you can't c- contact this person. To be honest, didn't try. I was really angry. So yesterday, so I'm. But really if watching- you want to no, if you want to bait me into that, you have to say something back and then block me. Because what you did was wait for me to send some stuff and then blocked me. I'm not just going to keep sending you stuff. But you were horrible. Right? What happened? Okay. Uh I text Ron. And I said, I'm the Dwight of our podcast because I was editing an episode and I'm also rewatching The Office. And Ron had a big pause and then carry on energy. And I thought, oh, he's a lot like Jim and I'm the Dwight. So I text this to Ron. Ron hurries back along with the news that actually, no, he's Oscar and I am Andy Bernard. <laughs> he said I was Andy. And I've never been more offended by anything in my life. I'll take Michael, I'll take Dwight, I, I, I'll take any, I, I'll take anybody. But Andy! What about what you've just done does not scream Andy Bernard to you? He's so annoying! Yeah. <laughs> So I blocked him on WhatsApp, but he didn't notice. No, how could I notice? I'd even meet Angela over Andy. You call yourself the low-down dog? No, we call me the low-down dog as an ironic thing. (laughs) No, dog. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it fits. No. He he did a cappella at university. You did improv? Yeah, that's a Michael thing. Yeah, but it's also, it's got Nard Dog energy. Don't keep saying I have Nard Dog energy. <laughs> I don't think it's very kind. But you do. You even called me Big Tuna rather than <laughs> Jim, which is what Andy called him. Well, it isn't kind, and I was very angry with you, but I've forgiven you for the sake of the podcast today. So hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's a happy birthday to Stephen this week. Ron, you still haven't done your drawing, by the way, for last week's birthday. No, forgot. (laughs) You need to do a waffle drawing, or you're going to get behind. Happy birthday, Stephen. Uh, Pick a food substance that Ron's got to make you a picture out of. This feels like a good feature to do. It if it could be honey or date extract or soy sauce or these things I have. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, listen, happy birthday. We hope you have a good day. And your birthday coincides with the first day of our Patreon release. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Third of February. That is the the day our first geography lesson drops, which we're very excited about. And there's lots of little patrons quivering in the Patreon waiting for the first episode, which was exciting. I didn't expect to get sign-ups before we'd released anything. I'm back. Where were you? Oh, um, uh, I, I, you said the first, and then you froze. Oh, ages. I thought you were just not joining in again. Um, so happy you. birthday, Stephen. Join the Patreon, everyone. Patreon.com forward slash Lex Education. Big news on the socials this week is that Jenny C drew the mole that we were talking about last week. Uh, and loved it. We love it. Love that mole. Love it so much. Um, Yeah, Andy, what is it? (laughs) Do not call me Andy. (laughs) Say sorry. (laughs) Say sorry. Um, So what we were thinking about doing is uh, we were going to let 
the fab rats, the Patreon subscribers, <laughs> name them all. Um, so a poll will go up after the release of this episode, and we will come up with an equally cute name as Bunsen um, for our little mole friend. By a poll, then, does that mean we've got to come up with the suggestions and they choose one, or are we just going to put up a thing and then they can comment and decide in the comments? Well, I don't want a Boaty McBoatface situation on our hands, so I think we should moderate right. the suggestion. I don't think the Fab Rats are like that, though. Anyway, yeah, so that'll happen. Um, we very much enjoyed Dr. Tracy Epton telling us about Ronograms. There's this yes. new unit of measurement that has been named after Ron. Um, so obviously somebody very high up in science is brushing up on their basics and listening to the podcast. So that's exciting, Ron. Yeah, they must have, um, you know, whatever the biggest one before is. And then they looked at my head and they were like, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. That used to be your nickname, didn't it? Acorn head. Aww. Yeah. But acorns are small. That's more about yeah, the shape had, of my head. Yeah, you, ha- you have an acorn-shaped head. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thanks for all the playing this week. You are the bestest people. Um, it's a lovely episode today. You're going to have a nice time. Um, it's not really about anything that hasn't already been <laughs> covered. We're just relearning some stuff. Um, but uh, have a good time. And then um, hopefully see you Friday for the geography lesson. Whoop. Whoop. Hello, Ron. Hi, Laura. How are you? Yes, good, thank you. (laughs) You always sound like a driving instructor that doesn't really like me very much. (laughs) Um, This is the fourth thing we've recorded today. Yeah, we do have to say hello to each other a lot, don't we? Because we we record an intro and then last week's quiz and then a new lesson. And an outro. Yeah, yeah. So we try and do the actual topical chat in the intro outro, but then it does just mean that when we start the main bulk of the episode, we just have to go. It's lesson time. Well, we do just have a, one of those one of those podcasts where we say hello to each other twice, and I think that's fine. I love it. Yeah, I'd like a podcast that was just entirely someone saying hello to someone else. <laughs> just salutations and platitudes. <laughs> How are you? Hello. <laughs> hello. Are you okay? Hiya. Right, it's physics today, Laura. Oh, yes, yes. But listen, listen, I absolutely (laughs) didn't care about the quiz last week and I apologise to the listener for not pulling my weight in terms of the me failing is what you're here for, not me not trying. So um, I will try really hard today. I don't know how you're going to react to this episode Oh, you said fucking last week that as physics went, it wasn't going to be bad. Yeah, it's not going to be bad, but it's not necessarily that you're going to enjoy it, um, because it's a bit of a revision episode. Oh, I hate flashback episodes. But weirdly, this is just coming up again, right, in the in the physics syllabus. Okay, because... but it's not it's not letters and sums. No, we're going back to atoms. Oh, all right, I don't mind atoms. Atoms are different to cells. Yes, atoms are different to cells, are different to isotopes, are different to ions. Now, an isotope... Wait, don't spoil all the content we've got coming later, Laura, because we'll run through this again. Well, that's good, because I... An isotope... No, don't yet. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Right, well, I am ready and here Um, to do this. Have you got new glasses? No, I've had my fucking hair cut. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Sorry. Do you just never look at me? Um, I, I don't study you. <laughs> yeah, it's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're learning about um, atomic structure at the moment um, in physics. So we're going, I think it was chemistry kind of when we went through this last time. Um, it seems that I never skip ahead. I don't want to do spoiler waves on myself about what's coming up in the syllabus. But I think we're building up to talk about radiation. Ooh. Yeah. Um, So I think we just need to, you know, find out what a normal atom is like before we find out what the weird ones are like that are radioactive. Okay. Are you all right? Yeah, I just got worried then because I don't often react well to you changing up the rules 
<laughs> so, How have I changed the rules? <laughs> not you. Hang on. Not uh, This isn't an accusation of you. It's just science does it. But like you teach me how something works and then you go, and here's a million trichos that don't do it. <laughs> and then I get annoyed. And you're scared that radiation is a tricko. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared that radiation is one big tricko and it's going to push all of my knowledge about atoms out of my head. Well, Also, my eye has been twitching for over a week, Ron, and I can't get it to stop. Sorry. Uh, How do I make an eye stop twitching? Do some biology on it. Um, rub and poke it? <laughs> <laughs> Sand? I've pushed a load of bacteria in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's not helping. Um, grit. I think we... <laughs> It's grit hey, and debris. Grit and sand are the same thing. <laughs> Not in the tropics. Um, well, now we know we have to have released that Detentron by the time of episode 33. Mm. The timelines are so confusing for this podcast. They are. Um, and we're not making it simpler. Anyway, we're not actually <laughs> going to get on to radiation today. Today is all recap, okay? Recap for your kneecap. <laughs> 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 the reason why I asked that's the- what they should call knee surgery we're just going to do a little quick recap <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want that one I didn't have anything in the bank for knee surgery <laughs> okay um, the reason why I asked if you were right actually though is because um, I said the word radioactive and you didn't sing Imagine Dragons afterwards no I didn't yeah no I was thinking about the topic that's nice. So Now I'm thinking about topics the chocolate bar. <laughs> um, there's just a nice little paragraph here at the top. It says, Ionising radiation is hazardous but can be very useful. Although radioactivity was discovered over a century ago, it took many nuclear physicists several decades to understand the structure of atoms, nuclear forces and stability. Early researchers suffered from their exposure to ionising radiation. Rules for radiological protection... Marie were- Curie! Yeah, she died of cancer because of all the... Radioaction that she was around. Yeah. 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 So I don't think it's called radioaction. <laughs> radioactivity. <laughs> I thought I'd gotten away with that. Um, <laughs> right. So 6.4.1 atoms and isotopes, the structure of an atom. Laura, what? I invented a-, a new word on Twitter the other day about this podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you understood something, then it means you've un understood it. <sighs> I like that. It's like being whelmed. Yeah. Like, understood means, or I distanded it. You understood it at the time someone was talking it through with you, and then the second you went to do it on your own, it was nonsense again. <laughs> it's like one of my favourite jokes in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt is the I overstand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, Laura, what are atoms made of? Neutrons, protons, electrons. Yes, indeed. What's in the nucleus? The sound desk. (laughs) That is neutrons and protons. Yeah, because they're the happy Bob Marleys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're positive, and then the neutrons, sound engineers. Yeah. BT Dubs, I listened to that episode of 99% Invisible that you recommended about reggae. Ah, wasn't it good? It was very, very interesting. Yeah, everything about 99% Invisible is good, to be fair. It's a really good podcast, but that one in particular, I thought you would love. Yeah, that one was super interesting. And then I listened to one about jackalopes. Oh, yeah, that one's also good. Yeah. Don't you just love his voice? I'm Roman Mars. He's got a really deep voice and then he giggles like a little nerd and it's great. (laughs) Yeah, it's the kind of podcast that you need to focus on, though. Um, It's a good travelling podcast. Yeah. Anyway, so is this one. Um, This you don't need to focus on at all. (laughs) This, if if you actually focused on this podcast, you'd have a nosebleed. (laughs) (laughs) They're doing two different podcasts. (laughs) (laughs) Um, right. How, are atoms big, Laura, or are they small? Uh, varies. Not on the grand scheme of things. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the listener, I shook my head at Laura then for a long time. 
atoms are very small. <laughs> yeah, but in comparison to each other, some are big and some are small. But no, compared to me, an atom is very small. Yeah, on the, on the scale of everything, very small. Very small. God. Unless you're in that film about um, Michael Douglas where he goes small. Ant-Man. Is that about Michael Douglas? <laughs> No, ow! He is in it, though, I think. He is in it. But it's not a biopic. <laughs> Where he plays the villain, I believe. I don't think he's the villain. He's like a bad dad, isn't he? I don't know. I... I think I think he's... he's. I don't think he's a villain. I think that bald man with the, like, face is the villain. And... <laughs> <laughs> Not just a thumb wearing a suit. Um, Ant Man was after Doug- I tapped out of Marvel. Michael Douglas is is he's the dad of Evangeline Lilly, and he's a bit overprotective of her, which is kind of a bad character trait. But I don't think he's the baddie. Oh, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's after I tapped out of Marvel. I I haven't seen it. I have seen it. I thought it was um, not as good as Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my, my little pumpkin just gave a rumble. Um, I'm very you hungry. should have some curly fries. I'm we're gonna, uh, Judith and I are having mac and cheese and pizza for dinner today. Mac and cheese and pizza? Yeah, we're going to put the mac and cheese on top of the pizza. Ron, what? you have a dairy allergy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You aren't supposed to eat cheese. I had creamy gnocchi for lunch on Sunday, followed by a lasagna. So <laughs> that poopy <laughs> ship has sailed. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> the less said about well, the guff coming out of me, the better. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to hear the sound effects on this episode. Um, right. Right, so far all I've written down is atomic structure. <laughs> so I'm ludicrously tired today, but I am trying. <laughs> so atoms are really small. Atoms are small. I'll write that down. Atoms are small. They are 1 times 10 to the minus 10 metres. Across. 1 times 10 to the minus 10. Mystic ladies. <laughs> Have you um, have you looked into standard form <laughs> since we last spoke about it? Standard form. Yeah, this like times ten to the. Ugh, no. <laughs> okay, but assume you... I don't think about any of this. Between... But you, you get it, right? No. What? <laughs> oh, is this SR codes? The like everything has its own unit stuff. No, it's called standard form, um, and it's a way of displaying very big or very small numbers. Oh, no, I forgot that that existed. So that that times existed. 10 to the minus 10... And I knew that you'd be mad, but I persisted. ...means that basically... One times 10 to the minus 10. <laughs> you need to divide it by 10, 10 times. Oh, like the opposite of squared. Yeah, exactly. That's what a minus, Sweet. like, to the power of a minus number does. Yeah, all right. Um, so it's zero point no 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 one. I'll just measure it in millimeters then. Well, then it would be one times ten to the minus seven milliliters uh, millimeters. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Do you know what's less than millimeters? Uh, decimeters. No, deci means ten. <laughs> All right, minus decimeters. No, um, nanometers. Mm, um, one nanometer. Actually, no. Sorry, it's micrometers next, and then nanometers, and then micro nano. I think picometers. Aww, picometers. That's cute. Yeah. Anyway, so they're small, right? Um, the basic structure of an atom, as we know, positively charged nucleus, negatively charged electrons around. Yes. Yeah, the radius of the nucleus is less than one ten thousandth the radius of the atom. The radius of oh. the nucleus. Oh, so the nucleus is tiny. The nucleus is tiny. Remember, everything is basically empty space and you're never touching anything and we live in a void? 
Yeah. Yeah. And the table's pushing. Elect- no wonder I'm always hungry. Everything I eat is air. Not even air. All I'm eating is electrons and protons. And neutrons. Uh, I don't like this. <laughs> Wait till you get to um, uh, A-level and then you find out that protons and neutrons are made up of other things. What? Quarks. Quark. Quark's cheese, isn't it? No, that's curds. No, I'm sure quark is a type of cheese. Uh, quarks. Up, down, up quarks, down quarks. Charm but quarks and... Shake it all around quarks. Silly quarks? Quark. What's the opposite of a charm quark? Chonk quark. Yeah, quark is a dairy product. A type of fresh dairy made from milk. The milk is soured. Strange. Yeah, it's up, down, strange, charm, bottom and top. <laughs> this fresh, so white cheese. They're doing two different podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> this fresh soft white cheese is prepared from pasteurized cow's milk with a small amount of rennet added to achieve a good firm curd. Mm. Mm. Do you want a good firm curd? Do you know what rennet is? Mm, I think that is actually like an animal meat product, isn't it? Is it bone marrow or no, something? No, it's a protein taken from the stomach lining of calves. Oh no. Oh, well, I hate that. Anywho, electrons are arranged at different distances from the nucleus. We know this. Different shells. Yeah, because of um, magnets. Sure. (laughs) These (laughs) represent different energy levels, essentially. The electrons arrangement can change in two circumstances. Can you guess what they might be? Um, Sex and a jumble sale. A jumble sale? Yeah, you have to display things in different places if it's not selling. Hmm, maybe we could think about it, Atoms, as jumble sales. I like jumble sales. No, to be serious for a second, as I promised I would be all episode, and I'm nailing it, uh, it would be (laughs) when they get bonded and when they are in solution. No, I'm afraid not. Um, remember- those were quite good answers, though, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, As wrong answers go, those <laughs> were potential. pretty good yeah. wrong answers. And, like, if I didn't know what I was talking about, maybe I'd have believed you. Um, but I've got the silly bus, so that's fine. Um, no, as I said, the, the, the distances represent different energy levels. So what two scenarios would change the distances? Uh, increase or decrease in energy? Exactly, yes. Which is basically either them absorbing radiation or them emitting radiation. Only radiation, so heat wouldn't affect it. Well, um, heat is passed via radiation. Don't think about that, that's fine. Just think about radiation. Wait, yeah, like a radiator. I'm not getting radiation, though. Wait, what's happening in the world? You're getting electromagnetic radiation all the time. Not me. What yeah. from? What that's do I what, need to turn off? That's what light is. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't make me scared of light. <laughs> i got too much to be scared of. But Hey, am I going to die because I sleep with my phone under my pillow every night? Nah. Okay. I'm going to die because we're all just mortal meat sacks. Okay. Increase or decrease energy in the atom changes... In the, the, in the electrons. Well, they are the atom. They're part of the atom, yeah, but not in the, the electrons, yeah. uh, and that changes the configuration. It changes the the distance those electrons are from the nucleus. Okay. Got an itch. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Which one's the sweet one? Evaporated or condensed? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say evaporated. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Cool, okay, I've sent you to the shopping list. It's all good. Mac 
cheese on pizza. Gonna get some veggie nugs. Um, what are you doing? I'm waiting for you. Uh, yeah, but I just sung a jingle and now we're back in it. Oh, well, how the hell was I supposed <laughs> to know that? You sang a song about veggie nugs. Yeah, and I thought you'd be all like, pop, pop, cool. Oh, no, I was giving you a taste of the Ron treatment when somebody does a brilliant bit and then Ron <laughs> yes ands it into the toilet. Boo ands. Um, <laughs> ow. What was that? That was my <laughs> ankle. <laughs> yeah, and it crunched. Um, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling so much. To... <laughs> Very tired. Um, yeah, I don't think you should be allowed to have birthdays. They're no. breaking you. Were you going to be 27? Yeah. Jimi Hendrix age. Yeah, you're not going out in a blaze of glory, though. You're a slug. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think of myself in some ways as the Jimi Hendrix of podcasting, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ron, no. You're teaching your sister science and singing about the mac beats that you're about to have. Oh, I can't wait to have some chicky nugs. Um... Wait, where are the chicky nugs going? In and around the rest of the food. <laughs> Ron. What? I don't think that that's good for your heart. Well, they're going to be veggie. They're going to be corn. Still, I still don't think that they're good for you. You invented nuggy tea. Yeah, and I had nuggy tea for lunch <laughs> yeah. today. But I didn't have it in a mac and cheese on a pizza. Why not? Get good. <laughs> no. I've been quite healthy today. It's my birth. You had curly fries for lunch. (laughs) But home-cooked ones. So? (laughs) I didn't put any cheese on them and I had light mayonnaise. (laughs) You're getting there. Um, It's my birthday eve. Leave me alone. I th- I like birthday eve episodes because you're not even trying to teach me anything. It's so easy to get you off subject. <laughs> I am uh, going on a lot of tangents. Um, said tangents, weird. Uh, I just found a load of Tom's D and D dice. Ooh. Roll the D twenty. If you get a twenty, let's just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, is there a twenty here? Oh yeah, right. Okay. It's a two, but the two is right next to the 20. Oh, almost a very short episode. Right. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what's an atom, Laura? We just did this. No, no, no. But what? Tiny thing. Yeah, but what is an atom? <laughs> Building block of the universe. What's it made of? And what? We just did this! <laughs> yeah, let me <laughs> Fucking hell. And what different... There's a little ball, mm. a little ball, and it's got... Let, it's me got finish, let me finish my sentence, please. Okay. What's an atom, what's it made of, and what differentiates it from an isotope or an ion? <laughs> right, an atom is a nucleus surrounded by electrons. Mm-hmm. An isotope... Wait, but what makes it an atom not one of the other things it is usual (laughs) (laughs) what an odd word uh well let me tell you what the other things are and then you'll just see the difference okay so an isotope it's very interesting to me that you can rattle off what the other things are but (laughs) you can't flip that around and say like um (laughs) <laughs> what an atom is. What do you mean? I told you what an atom was. Yeah, okay, tell, wait, tell wait, me what I Wait, 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 wait. An isotope is an atom with a changed number of neutrons in it. Yes. So if it has an increase or decrease standard, it's an isotope. Well, all atoms are isotopes of other ones. There isn't a standard, and then the other ones are isotopes. Different isotopes are... Oh. They're all isotopes, if that makes sense. Isotope is just kind of how you, how you differentiate between it. Right, yeah, okay. So that's what I said. Yeah. And what was the other thing? An ion, please. Oh, an ion is charged because ions need electricity. So an ion is an, electro- is an atom or isotope... 
isotopic atom with a charge. And why does it have a charge? Uh, well, I guess because it's lost or gained an electron. Yeah, it has an... But then I don't understand why it's not a new atom. Because it's the proton that defines what type of atom it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's all correct. So if an ion is one that has a different number, an atom is one where there's an equal number of electrons and protons. What? Atoms is when there's equals, or equals p equals of electrons and protons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it, really. And an isotope... Whoa, neutrons! And an ion equals plus or minus E's. Yeah. I'm the queen of the swinging science bitches. All atoms of a particular element have the same number of protons. Proton defines mm -hmm. the element. The, the number proton defines the element. The number of when we f when we eventually do our science based musical. Mm. It's gonna be so good in the West End. Yeah. Hamill. Hamilton. <laughs> no, no. What will we call it? Um, the Book of Moron, <laughs> and it's all based on my notebook. It's <laughs> uh, very good. That's why they pay you the silly money. Um, the number. Um, uh, what was I saying? The number of protons in an atom is its atomic number. Um, number of protons. Equals, yep. Let me just send you something on the WhatsApp web. Ah, oh, the WhatsApp web? Not another figure. <clears throat> I'm surprised WhatsApp web hasn't made it on anyone's bingo boards yet. Yeah, that's true. But they might have done by the time we sent this. Mm. What's happening with the timelines? See, because I want to tell you, I bought Tom's Christmas presents today, but by the time this episode goes out, everybody will be like, you're buying him Christmas presents in mid-February. And I'm like, nah, -uh, it's November. It is, what'd you get him? I got him like a pack thing about D&D &D where you can do D&D &D in space. Oh. Nice. Right, you've sent me a thing on the WhatsApp web and it says, nah. Which is? Uh, Sodium. Sodium yes. And there's a number at the top of the na that says 23, and in brackets, mass number. And then at the bottom, it says 11, atomic number. Yeah, so the atomic no, number. No, absolutely. Finish that yawn and then start talking to the poor <laughs> listeners. So the, the number of protons is the atomic number. So how many protons does a sodium atom have? 11. And how many protons does an isotope of sodium have? Eleven. Yes, it's still sodium. It still <laughs> has eleven protons. The total number of protons and neutrons is the mass number. That's the 23. So does this mean you don't want to play Minecraft with me like we planned after this? No, I'll play Minecraft for a bit. But you, I thought you were having mac and cheese and pizza. Yeah, after we play Minecraft. What time? I don't know. Oh. A bit. <laughs> More than an hour? <laughs> I thought about an hour. <laughs> okay. Is that right. okay? Yeah, probably. What's up? Well, no, Tom's away. So I just need to plan my evening. <laughs> All right, let me text Meg. See if she's free when you're busy. Um, yeah, so 23, <laughs> right? That's the mass number <laughs> yeah. of, of it. That's how many... And what's that? That's electrons plus... No, that's that's neutrons and protons yeah. together. Pros and news. Yeah. So there's 12 neutrons yeah. in this how isotope. Many, yeah, in this particular isotope. Good job. That was really nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what... <laughs> You just you you're come on, you're doing what I'm not I'm so sprightly and peppy and you are like this is pre the cheese. <laughs> God, you are gonna be like dead in about three hours. Mm, I'm gonna watch X Files in bed in a cheese coma. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Um 
students should be able to relate differences between isotopes to differences in conventional representation of their identities, charges and masses. I don't I'd know put what that, that means, on my so. I'd put that on my bingo card. Ron says students should be able students. to. Yeah, that's a good one. Also, Ron says, Jesus Christ. I've seen that on some. Oh, have yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about the weather too much. That's what the bingo cards have taught me. <laughs> But I'll leave it a mystery as to what the weather's doing today. <laughs> yeah, here too. <laughs> it's night time, I can't actually see the weather. Um, oh, the weather was horrible, so much so that a nice lady <laughs> no, gave me an umbrella. <laughs> God damn it, now I Shout out Sugar Hill Brighton, thanks for the umbrella. Okay, um, so the next bit that we're going to do... Um, Wait, what did we learn from this thing? Oh, just what mass number and atomic number is. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah. Everything's made sense so far today. So, yeah, it's because we covered it's it all before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, new experimental evidence may lead to a scientific model being changed or replaced. That's science. No, you have to stick doggedly to what you thought was right ten years ago. Yeah. Um <clears throat> That Neil Oliver, he's... You know I always thought he was a wrong -un. Yeah. He's getting more wrong -un by the day. Yeah, he... He sucks. <laughs> um, God, Twitter really did go downhill when Muskie took over, right? Yeah, it seems to be. It's, it's really dead at the moment. Nobody's really talking about anything except for the fact that it's going downhill. Yeah. I wonder what it will be like when this comes out. Maybe gone. Did you sign what up for I Mastodon? I tried to sign up for Mastodon. I don't know what's happening in it, though. No, I didn't get it at all. I can't find anybody that I like. And then I was like, oh, I'll go through all the people I follow on Twitter and see who I love and try and follow them. And then I was like, I don't really want to follow any of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I signed up just to bag a good name and then... Yeah, we should probably bag the Lex Education name. Yeah. Um... You can be in charge of Mastodon. That can be your social media. Christ, okay. Um, I'll get out of the abacus because I really don't understand it. Also, I don't know if that's helpful because I'm not sure I can get into the UK one. But I thought it all went to one middle server. I don't know. I don't know. All, <laughs> all I right, know you can is... have TikTok instead. I, I bagged Ron. I'm, I'm just Ron on Mastodon. Masteron. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um... But anyway, um, so new experimental evidence may lead to a scientific model being changed. So when we do experiments... You've got to be ready to change your minds. <laughs> Difficult second song in the Book of Moron. <laughs> when new evidence presents itself. And then a parade of new evidence comes across the stage. you got to be ready to change your mind and then all of the singers in a line take their mind props off their heads and swap them with somebody else's change your minds and all the minds get changed <laughs> what do you think God. sounds really <laughs> tedious <laughs> It's not a good run, but it is gonna it's gonna get an extended run. <laughs> Come on, Ron Where's your energy, Ron? What did people think of that? Uh... Finish your yawns before you start your sentences, you butt. Shut up. <laughs> What did people think atoms were like before we found out what electrons were, Laura? Uh, like puzzle pieces that all clip together. No. Uh, soft and hard, depending on the material they made up. Potentially. But we thought that they were just tiny spheres that could not be divided. Do you remember... Do you remember the Greek philosopher who theorised, like, what would happen if you just kept snapping a stick in half? Descartes. No, the, the Greek philosopher. Jesus. Greek. Snap only as you would want others to snap onto you. Well, he, yeah, he thought that um, there would be tiny spheres. But then we discovered the electron, didn't we, Laura? 
Yeah, yeah. Then, Found it down the back of the sofa. What did we think atoms were after that? Uh, maybe um, a delicious atom. Apples. No. Uh, think back to last time we spoke about this. Seeds. <laughs> no, she, like, come on. Chris, <laughs> like back. those no, that, single things. No, this isn't new content. This is old stuff. Come on. What do you mean? Think back. Yeah. What are they made of? What did we think they were made of? Wafers. No. <laughs> Graphene. No. Think back further, Lauren. Not to the episode that we released this week. <laughs> Chloroplasts. Maybe it's tasty. Uh, meat. No, <laughs> fucking plum pudding. How oh, come plum on? Plum pudding. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Nah, that wasn't an atom, though, was it? I thought atoms were sitting in things. What? Well, I can't remember what plum pudding was. I spent ages trying to forget it, because at the time I really <laughs> understood it, and then it went on to be the only thing I understood, and it wasn't right. Yeah, and it's still not right. Um, but that's what we thought. We thought it was the electrons were negatively charged plums yeah, yeah, in a positively in a little... charged pudding. yeah. I've realised this whole time we've been talking about plum puddings, I've been picturing Toad in the Hole. But with plums or still sausages? No, sausages, but just referring to it as a plum pudding. Because I don't know what a plum pudding looks like, so I'm just picturing the closest thing I can picture. I imagine a spherical Christmas cake. Oh, you're not picturing a flat tart? No. Is a plum pudding a ball of pudding? Well, you wouldn't really call a tart a Pudding, would you? But like a Christmas pudding. I don't know what these psychopaths were doing back in the day. Well, I mean, there was probably beef and (laughs) (laughs) children and stuff in it. Um, Some quark. Um, Yeah, okay. Yeah, we thought it was a plum pudding. And then we found out actually the electrons aren't even attached, they're just like attracted. And how did we discover that? Oh, the foil, the gold foil. The gold foil, yes. Yes. Rutherford and friends. Rutherford and company. They're the bullies of the piece, and they keep coming in like, get get your gold foil out of my way. I'm going to fire it with my radioactive laser. Wait, so this musical isn't even about us or you it's kind of like a scientific version of it's a small world after all <laughs> where it's just going to be small science vignettes and songs about the scientific method no we're the main characters we're like humbling it all along um humbling but... it <laughs> We're not humbling then, a different word. You know what I mean. We're mumbling it all along. Um, But we are introducing different vignettes when we're going on adventures in science. Like, maybe we're time travellers. Okay, and Rutherford's a bad guy. Yeah, he's shooting innocent foil. (laughs) So we're on the side of the foil. (laughs) (laughs) The stakes are high. (laughs) Um, Yeah, because we know that the foil, we're like, don't shoot that radioactive at that foil. Why shouldn't I? It's in the name of science. Shut up. It already killed Lady Curie. Why would you want to kill foil too? Just because I do. So we're against scientific progress in this. If it kills people, yeah. It doesn't. It's foil. (laughs) It's foil. Uh, you, you gotta have, you gotta have, um, what do you call it? Like, you know, um. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you gotta have conflict, that's the word I couldn't think of. <laughs> but why couldn't, like, you know. Oh, Neil Oliver could be in it! We could all be mad at Neil Oliver! Oh, yeah. All right, me, you and Rutherford are working against Neil Oliver. Well, I mean, by the time that we do this, I guess the the UK will be such a sort of anti-science fascistic puppet state that maybe we do need to be anti-Rutherford. 
No, not us. We'll be the one truth speakers. We'll be recording this podcast from a bunker somewhere, getting the truth out. Mm. Like they'll have cancelled science off the syllabus and the only way people can learn it is huddled around their princess radios listening to this. Beans out of the can. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Shouting shut up us every time we get distracted because we don't know that this is the last bastion of science left. So Laura Rutherford, he shot radiation at gold foil. Yeah, and some of it went through and some of it bounced back, which led us to believe there were holes in the foil. And what were we expecting? All of it to bounce back, because there would Uh, be no no, holes. All of it to go through. Oh, what? No, why? Remember, he was like, this is the equivalent of uh, driving a train out of tissue paper. Yeah, and so that meant that the nucleus was chonkier than we knew yeah, about. it means that the, the mass of the nucleus is centred in the centre of the atom. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what I meant when I said all bounce back. So, um, yeah, so that's that, isn't it? That's good. <laughs> you are phoning this fucking in today. I'm not. I'm trying so hard. Yeah. How long have we been recording? <laughs> <laughs> 40 minutes. Getting there. Um, Niels Bohr adapted the nuclear model by suggesting that electrons orbit the nucleus at specific distances, which we now know that they do. The theoretical calculations of Bohr agreed with experimental observations. Woohoo! Later experiments led to the idea of the positive charge of any nucleus could be subdivided into a whole number of smaller particles. We We know that these are... What? Later experiments led to the idea that the positive charge of any nucleus could be subdivided into a whole number of smaller particles. Where have I lost Atomic you mass? Atomic Protons. Number? Protons. Yeah. <laughs> Each particle <laughs> having the same number of positive charge. The name proton was given to these particles. Because they're positive. Pro. Pro unions. Prokaryotes. What are you doing? Where are you going? I've lost the dog. <laughs> I'm still here. I can hear and I can talk. Don't worry. The experimental work of James Chadwick provided the evidence to show the existence of neutrons within the nucleus. This was about 20 years after the nucleus had become accepted scientific idea. Students should be able to describe why the new evidence from the scattering experiment led to a change in the atomic model. The scattering experiment? Rutherford. Oh. Didn't we just do that? Yeah, we did just do that a bit. (laughs) Students should be able to describe the difference between the plum pudding model of the atom and the nuclear model of the atom. The plum pudding suggested that the nucleus was, like, made of goop and atoms were sat in it, whereas actually most of it's empty space and not a pudding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, the nu- is the nucleus in a shell or is it just the protons and neutrons clustered together? Just clustered together, but there's... Different theories on sort of what that looks like. Ah, uh, okay. Whether they're all one-dimensional balls of string. String? Yeah, string theory. Is that what that means? Yeah. I always picture silly string when people say string theory. No, string theory is um, that is all built up of, um, yeah, one-dimensional um, strings of energy that vibrate. <sighs> I can't imagine having my shit together enough that it didn't blow my brain to know all this extra stuff about the universe. (laughs) You have to really have a good handle on life before you're ready to think about it all being string. I'm not there. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot. There's there's far we can go with the physics. We haven't talked about other dimensions. We haven't talked about um, uh, antimatter at all. Dark matter. Mm. I'm really scared of when we have to do space because I hate space. S- I don't want to talk about how big space is. Why? I'm really scared of space. I don't want to ever go in it and I'm scared one day we're going to have to. Well, we'll be long dead. 
Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, that's kind of all that we're doing today, because um, from here it goes into radioactive decay, so we'll, we'll do that in another episode. All right, well, this was good. I feel yeah, good. Just a nice little recapper, you know? And, and I think I knew most of that. Yeah, I was very impressed with your, your, your recall. Wicked. That's what I say to Mackie sometimes when we're out for a walk. All right, Ron. Well, listen, this test is going to go swimmingly. See you after the sting. All right. Okay. Hi, Laura. Hello, Ron. I've got another chocolate orange. Ooh, love a chocolate orange. Yep. I ate yesterday an entire bar of peanut M&M chocolate. Ooh, was it good? A bar of it? I ate, yeah, 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 like a big bar of it. I love that you were just about to go, well, I ate all of it. (laughs) Whereas I'd be like, no, I didn't like it at all. Still finished it. I'm not an (laughs) idiot. (laughs) I um, tell you the type of adult I'm trying to be at the moment. Fully stocked fruit bowl kind of adult. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem is is that I know the harsh reality of bananas, so I don't put those in the fruit bowl and they have to sit next to it. (laughs) Hmm, you sound like a sexy adult. (laughs) Um, yeah, but... Here's the thing I'm learning about being an adult. One, you can't eat a chocolate orange and do a podcast. Two... You can't have a fruit, a full fruit bowl if there's one to two of you in the house you, because all the fruit gets ripe at the same time and then you just have to eat all the fruit at once. No, that's <laughs> not true. That's my experience. There's just like, oh, it's not quite ripe, it's not quite ripe. And then there's a you day and, yeah. where you have to eat a stomach full of fruit and then you get the poops and then no. you don't want fruit again for years. No, because I don't exclusively eat avocados where there's like a one day nah, window of nectarines eating. Nectarines are the same. Grapes, the top ones, disguise themselves as healthy grapes, and then underneath it's just mush on a stick. Oh, grapes! You like you're on a, a, a three hour clock yeah. from the second you leave the shop. Like apples, yeah, but then, they've got longevity. Oranges, yeah, apples, you can't even tell when oranges are off. You just pick them up, and then suddenly you go, "Oh, this one's hollow. It's empty." Yeah, but that's but they. they yeah, but there's no... It's a part-time job keeping an eye on the fruit You can eat bowl. a satsuma as soon as you leave the shop. <laughs> so just eat it before it goes off. Like, why are you waiting till the last possible second? <laughs> because they're not ready. They are ready. I don't know, man. I don't know. I've got a lot of fruit in the house at the moment, and I'm already panicking about how I'm Well, just getting... eat it now. Eat it a bit. I had a nectarine at lunch. But no, I don't want another one today. Then you're buying too much fruit. Yeah, but then how do you have a fruit? How full is your full fruit bowl then? I've got a crate of satsumas, probably five, four or five apples in there and two lemons. And I've got a banana on the kitchen counter because of the harsh reality of bananas. <laughs> See, I keep my lemons separately because lemons are a cooking ingredient. Yeah, but they're a pop of colour in the fruit bowl. Yeah... Yeah, you might be onto something there, Ron. I've got my lemons and a mango in the kitchen. Well, then this is why you have a shit fruit bowl. You're not keeping your fucking fruit in it. Yeah, but the mango needs to be chopped up. I can't just, like, bite into a mango. So that lives in the kitchen, ready for prepping. Yeah, but I don't trough my fruit out the bowl. I take it out <laughs> and do it like and prepare it. Yeah, but then I've got to go from the dining room to the kitchen and then back to wherever I'm eating. These are adjacent rooms. <laughs> Also, I don't like the unwieldy fruits, like a pineapple. That just looks stupid in a fruit bowl because it's lying there and it's massive compared to all the other fruit. Yeah, pineapples are a bit of a chore. I love pineapples, but they're just, it's a lot of aggro. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I I stick to the classics. I stick to the small fruits. I stick to citruses that you cook with. I have a different little bowl for garlic and ginger. My ginger's in the freezer. Oh. Yeah. I found in a shop the other day, it was just like a massive bag of ginger. And I was like, I'm going to get that and put it in the freezer. Like it was frozen when you bought it? No. Oh. But now I can just take a nub out and use it whenever I want. Yeah. 
I go through quite a lot of ginger because I make my ginger teas. Blech. Um. Anyway, quiz, is it? It is quiz. So do you remember what we were doing last time? Do you know what, Ron? I've not got a Scooby-Doo. Was it biology? No. Oh. No, I've not got a clue. Oh, it wasn't, was it physics? Yeah. Oh, that's great, because that means we're recording a biology today. We are recording a biology today. Um, physics. No, I don't know, buddy. So we, it was kind of like a, almost a, a, a revision episode that we didn't ask for, because it was oh. just kind of going over this, the structure of atoms again. Oh, OK. All right. Well, then I feel good about answering these questions. Yeah, so this quiz is out of one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven, eight. No. Yeah, ten. Ten, okay. Um, cool. So, the first thing uh, that I want to run you through is standard form. Right. Uh, do you remember what standard form is? No. It's that way of um, portraying either very big or very small numbers. Moles? No, moles is a number, a very big number. We did display the what a mole is using standard form, though. Um. Oh, hang on. Is this all those putting those little numbers up the top? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So could you please write... No, I can't. 5.4 times 10 to the power of 3 in normal numbers. 5... 5.4 yep. times 10 to the power 3. Yep. And you want me to do what? Write that as a normal number. Okay, so I think 10 to the power 3 is 10 times 10 times 10. Yep. So that's 1,000. So then 5.4 times 1,000. I move that little dot. One. No, other way. <laughs> One. Two, three, so 5,400. Exactly, yeah. 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 Okay. That's a mark, well done. Ding! Ding, ding, ding! Ding, ding! ding. Um, Look at this nice notebook I got sent today, Ron. Ah, sorry, I hit the microphone with it. Musings of brilliance. Does that have your name in Boston? It says Musings of a Brilliant Woman, and it's got my name, Laura Lex, embossed in it. Oh, who made that for you? Uh, My friend Esther Manito, brilliant comedian, shout out to her. I directed her Edinburgh show this year and she sent me this lovely little book to say thank you very much. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I was going to say, I know that name for somewhere and I was like, yeah, because we we chat. Um, Yeah, she's very funny. Are you ready for question number two? Um, I thought that was it, to be honest, and I crushed it with 100%. No. I'm torn on physics quizzes now because of Carol doing the stats on how the quizzes are going. I don't want physics to be the one I'm doing best at because <laughs> it just seems so backwards that that's the case. So, I, But I don't want to tank a quiz on purpose. Um, yeah, it is a bit backwards, but I think uh, maybe I give you easier questions in physics because of that. Mabes, I'm not arguing about it. It's fine. Anywho, please write... Naught point naught 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 six. Nought. Hang on, how many noughts? Naught point naught 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 naught. Yeah. Six seven eight in standard form. Uh. In standard form. Yes. Hmm. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yes, you do. You just got the first question right. So, one. Let's have a guess here. Uh, hmm. So would that be 67.8 to the power something? Uh, when you do standard form, it's always one digit point something. All right, so I'm going to guess that is 6.78. One, two, three, four, to the... No, wait, how do you do that then? 6.78 times 10 to the power of minus 5. Ding, yeah. What yes! Fun. That's standard I form. Used, I just used my Sherlock-type intuition there. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah, standard form's useful. 
Um, so now do you understand a little bit more like when it's moles, when it's like 6.28 times 10 to the 23, like what that means? I don't really understand why that's any easier to have 6.78 times something than just putting 0.0 and 6.78. That, it, it's taken up exactly the same amount of space on my piece of paper. Yeah, with that, but you can see if it was 23 zeros. Yeah, all right, reasonable. Yeah, yeah. it's that all sort right. of thing. Also, the other reason is that... Um, so. If you were to multiply two of these numbers together, so let's, like, if we took the two standard form numbers that we've got there, um, you know, if we wanted to multiply 5,400 by this um, 0.00067a, basically the 10 times, uh, the 10 to the 3 and the 10 to the minus 5, you can just kind of cancel those out and then you get 10 to the minus 2. Like, those numbers just kind of instantly chop each other. Yeah. So it can help make sums a bit easier as well. Um, cool. Right. So on to um, off of maths and back into physics. Um, we're we're going to do a slightly um, more open question where you just have to answer it. And then there are five marks you can get, but it's not. A, yeah. Please describe the structure of an atom. Oh, I don't know where to start. Doesn't matter where you start. Can I get marked down if I say something stupid? If I hit the five things I have to say, does it matter if everything else around it is weird? If you say something, like, outwardly wrong, yeah, you're not going to get full marks. Ugh. Well, it's very dark in here, isn't it? It's very dark in here as well. That's just the light of my screen. Look at this, if I switch to... Something else. Whoa. Oh, yeah. My screen's not really illuminating me. Maybe I'm too far away from it. Can I fix that instead of answering your question? Um, right, okay. So an atom is mostly space. Um, <clears throat> in the middle of the atom are neutrons and protons um, of varying amounts. And then around... The outside in shells around the nucleus, which is where the neutrons and protons are hiding, even though nobody really knows if the nucleus is a thing or not, there's electrons, and the electrons surround the nucleus in formations. And again, the formation and the number of shells depends on the element and what sort of keeps the electrons around the nucleus charge so whether or not they are attracted to the protons in the may or may not be nucleus and the protons are positive and the electrons are negative and the neutrons are neutral five marks laura ding 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 so I gave you a mark for protons and neutrons in the nucleus, um, a mark for a positively charged nucleus, and a mark for negatively charged electrons, a mark for energy shells, and a mark for mostly empty space, which was weirdly the first thing you said. Well, that's what I said. I never know where to start. I'm not saying... No, I'm not saying it was weird. Why it was, is that weirdly the first thing I said? Because I, I thought that if I would have... Um, I would have guessed that that would be... the If you weren't to get one of the marks, that would be the one that you wouldn't get. Mm, that's the one I think about the most because it's really <laughs> ruined my life. Well, five. Uh, you're, you're you're on seven for seven at the moment. No pressure. Um, Boom. What's the atomic number of beryllium? Oh fucking hell. Um. Nine point zero one. Nope. Four. It is four, but. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, I'm afraid. Why? I said it. No, you said 9.01. What? Where are you getting that from? You said 9.01. Nah, not by the time I've What's edited this. What's the mass number of oxygen? 16. Point anything? Not according to the periodic table of the elements. Um... I mean, that's the problem is, it just says, look, hang on, 16. 
Go to the right a little bit. Yeah, it does just say 1600. So yes, Mark then. Mark, well done. Whoop, whoop. Um, and then finally, who was James Chadwick? Who? James Chadwick. James Chadwick. James Chadwick. James. Was he the one who rolled out the gold foil? Is that your answer? Don't ask me a question. Uh, James Chadwick, hang on. I know that this name is not in my notes. Oh, fuck, I didn't take any notes. He wasn't a particularly (laughs) hunky candle maker. What? Chad Wick. (laughs) 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 Um, James Chadwick. I've got a feeling actually it was Rutherford that did the gold foil experiment. So that wouldn't be James Chad. It's a trick question. <laughs> James Chadwick <laughs> is not a scientist. It's a tricko. You love trickos. I do love trickos, but this isn't one. Has anybody put that on their lab rat bingo yet? A tricko. Trickos? No. Oh, I love trickos. I love trickos too. No, it's not. Um, James Chadwick discovered the neutron. Oh. Uh... Yeah. Oh, I should remember that Jimmy Neutron. He was a cartoon character, wasn't he? Yeah. Jimmy Do you think Chadwick. that's why he was called that? No. Oh. Because, yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Cool. What did I get there? Eight out of ten, though. Eight out of ten points. Eight out of ten. Cats Does Countdown won't have me on the show. Arseholes. <laughs> Over you to really us. You make it sound like you've been asking a lot. Well, I have. Every TV show in the world I've asked a lot. I will say no thank you. I've watched a couple of episodes of um, QI recently. Yeah, they should have me on as well. We only have the same three people, it seems, circulating. Well, it's because TV gets really freaked out. They go, oh, if the general public sees someone they don't recognise, they'll throw their televisions out the window because they'll get spooked. Anyway. Anyway. All right. (coughs) Outro time. Ron, that's one of my favourite episodes in ages. I really liked that one. Yeah. I think we should do a musical. Chill. It was very chill, a peaceful episode. Dayman. Ah. Maybe we could do a Lex Education musical panto next year for Christmas. I think, Laura, what you need is more work and projects. (laughs) (laughs) I love work and projects. But also you're not musical. I'm musical. I sing all the time. Oh, we should do it a cappella. Yeah. No. Wait, you're trying to trap me. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> um, well, listen, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, I very much enjoyed that episode. Um, don't forget patreon.com forward slash Lex Education um, for our first geography lesson on Friday. Um, we will hopefully see you there. And we love you very much. And happy science, everyone. Oh, next Plus week sp- will no. be... N- no, ignore what? me. Hmm. What, are you, what are you talking about? What? What? I was going to say next week will be our Valentine's, but it won't be. It'll be the week after. It will be the week after, because that's when Valentine's Day is. Oh, my God, I hate you so much. Why are you so antagonistic? Because <laughs> um, I'm the Oscar of the situation. <laughs> Love you, everybody. Love Class you. dismissed, nod pups.